I have cried, I have laughed, and I have struggled making YouTube videos. My name's Eric Thor, I'm an INFJ, and this is my story on becoming a YouTuber. So today I'm sitting at about 900 published videos, and I was one of the first MBTI YouTubers out there. I was one of the first to start uh, putting out YouTube videos. Most of the people that were active back in my days, back in 2014, don't make videos anymore. They're not there, they're gone. And today a new world is waiting for us. We have new YouTubers like Frank James, Love Who, Dear Kristen and others that are blowing up online with new original content and unique spins on the 16 personalities. As we speak, 16 personalities videos are blowing up. Yeah, we are the new trend on YouTube. And what I've found is Frank Games is almost at 1 million subscribers. That is incredible. Love Who almost, uh, yeah, just a few days ago hit 100,000 subscribers. And that's really fantastic. And these people, they have done what nobody else thought possible. Everyone thought that 16 personalities videos would remain a niche fad on YouTube. Like, nobody would ever hit the 50k window. Nobody would ever grow to that point. So, why are 16 personalities videos so popular? Why do you enjoy watching these sketches so much? Well, first of all, the person that really started the whole trend of these kind of 16 personality sketches, the one that showed us this was possible, is Bogdan Jakubets. He's a YouTuber that started the whole thing. He was one of the first to blow up making these kind of funny sketches showcasing the different 16 personalities. Now, Bogdan is really not around to the same extent anymore, but Frank Games is the one that really picked this up and made it his own. And there is no surprise why. He's an, he is a true acting talent. He is not just good at acting, but he's also good at scripting and directing videos. He's not just a YouTuber, he's a professional filmmaker, if you would say so. And probably he would uh, be like, no, Eric, I don't know about that. But uh, <laughs> right from my point of view, like what he does and how he does it is incredibly professional, incredibly talented and incredibly inspiring. What I want to tell you today is my personal experience making YouTube videos and I, like I said at this point I'm at 900 published videos. I've hit 35,000 subscribers. I am one of the slow, steady, slow paced moving uh, <laughs> movements on YouTube. I'm one of the people that are bubbling under the surface. While other people are shooting up like a rocket I have been there for a long time, just slowly making videos, discussing the 16 personalities. And while I have been uh, focused on uh, just researching the theory and understanding how the system works and trying to better understand the personality types, I have uh, found myself uh, learning so much, really understanding so much about the different types and really connecting with them. Uh, learning as I go. For me, it's been a step-by-step -step process of uh, uh, trying out new things, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. I haven't studied the algorithms. I haven't studied what works. I've just slowly and steadily like seen, okay, what trends exist, uh, what kind of videos seem to do well, what kind of uh, audience do I have, what kind of things do people like about my content, what can I do to inspire and help other people. For me, my key anxiety was always, is this good enough? I was a perfectionist. I was never happy. I was always dissatisfied with my videos. I never felt it was good enough. I never felt like it was really the inspiring story that I wanted it to be. I never really connected to what I made. I, it was never what I wanted. It was never something that uh, felt hit me. So... What made it stick, what made me stay on YouTube was actually you all, because you all enjoyed it. You all, <laughs> y'all, um, have been commenting on my videos and have been sharing your stories. And I receive loving, appreciative comments every day, like every single day. If I ever feel bad about what I do, if I ever struggle with anything, if I ever worry about what I'm doing, if I ever feel stuck, I just have to read through your comments and I feel better. You guys make me instantly feel better. And the fact is, uh, my journey has not been an easy one. And I'm going to share today why. 
So, actually, my first video was published back in 2009. That means I started on YouTube about four years after YouTube was created. So I was one of the first to actually start making YouTube videos. My first videos were about politics. Uh, it was recordings from different public appearances I did and things like that. But after that, what I moved to was uh, personality psychology. And I actually started making personality psychology videos already back in 2011. Now, many of these videos don't exist anymore. Truth is, all of my videos dating er later than 2014 have been deleted and I can't find them even if I wanted to. Why did I delete it? Yeah, beats me. <laughs> I just uh, must have had a bad day or something. I must have struggled. I must have felt insecure. I must have uh, worried about something. I mean, I should have just set them unlisted so at least that I could have seen it back and understood my journey and where I'm at. But yeah, back in the days, uh, my videos on personality psychology were quite controversial. And YouTube was a very different environment than it was today. Uh, there were lots of drama videos going on back and forth between different groups, different uh, versions of the MBTI battling it out against each other, fighting to see who was the best. We had an arena where people were toxically feeding on each other's worst sides. People were stereotyping, speed typing. There were lots of malpractioners out there. There were people out there that had really unhealthy views on personality psychology. And I can say thankfully that those views don't really exist anymore today. But I can say it was difficult to rise back in the days, 2011. It was hard to make put yourself out there because you were a target. If you put out videos about yourself or about the personality types, you were instantly a target of different groups uh, that were incredibly toxic, sometimes even cult-like, uh, in the way that they really fought to prove their own point and to uh, prove that they were right and that everyone else was wrong and misinformed. What I'm seeing today is a different arena, and this is if you're ever doubting or wondering about starting your own YouTube channel, if you want to start vlogging about being an INFP or what personality type you are, or if you want to start making sketches or trying things out, YouTube is a very different, a much more encouraging and positive arena today. Different systems have found some kind of way to coexist. We have found that even if we have different viewpoints, we're all trying to understand the same phenomena. And we have understand, stood and gained some kind of respect and awareness that, yeah, there are different ways of looking at these things. And whatever works for you, and if, as long as your theories are helpful for people, and as long as people get value out of what you're saying, it's good enough. It doesn't have to be scientifically perfect. It doesn't have to be scientifically perfect. It's enough that it's good enough for your viewers and for your audience. And that's all that matters, really. What I've found is, um, for me, uh, my YouTube channel has been both on the high and on the low. And I'm going to explain why. I'm going to explain why it's been so hard for me to make YouTube videos and why my channel has suffered so much. Actually, I started making videos consistently back in 2015 in the autumn there. And then I was making videos. And most of my videos, they didn't get more than like 50 viewers. You know, I was staggering i was trying things out i had no idea what videos to make my titles were all wrong everything was difficult to find people couldn't see my content find my content my videos were badly structured i was struggling so uh, it took me a long time and then my most popular videos i remember were some like understanding the enfj that got 17,000 subscribers and similar like i had some videos that were good but most of my videos bombed my peak came back in 2016, and that's really when I started growing my channel more consistently. I created what I call the New Jungian Academy. I was starting to deliver courses on the different personality types. I had a new spin on the MTI using neuroscience. My flow approach came out, and I started talking about personality types from the perspective of what makes a person happy, balanced, and what helps people relieve stress and anxiety. I was starting to use personality psychology not just to categorize people but also to understand what makes a person happy and healthy and for me that was when uh, the MTI actually gained real value. Up until that point I had been just trying to fit people in boxes. I'd just been trying to see what kind of boxes everyone fit into but 
after that, I started understanding, okay, but what can people be? What is people's true innermost potential? What is it that actually makes a person happy? To come to that point, I had to do a lot of studying. I read through tons of neuroscience journals. I worked with the INTJs on Yu Yang Yin typology. I made uh, articles. I did uh, research papers. We uh, published things on GitHub. We tried to just uh, get a theory down that uh, fit with modern science. Uh, so a way of doing personality psychology that was healthy and that was uh, aligned with science, not explained by science, because that's not possible yet, but at least something that aligned with existing science and didn't contradict it. Now, these videos became a hit, and my channel was growing. My channel was growing fast. Actually, my channel was doing really well, and my channel just kept on growing. Actually, I had a lot of success making YouTube videos. I was, uh, at this time, I moved to Holland, about four years ago, so back in 2017, I moved to Holland, the Netherlands, and I started just pumping out videos. For a few months there, it was my full-time job. It was what I spent all my time doing, and it was doing great. Being a full-time YouTuber, being co completely dedicated to what I did, I was able to really spend time on scripting all my videos and making everything perfect. However, yeah, obviously, I was not able to make that amount of money. I was not able to maintain the kind of audience yet. Even if my channel was growing, it was not to the point where I could live on that. So I had to get a job. And yeah, that's when things started going downhill. I got my first job. It was a job where I had to write down bike specifications. I worked for an online bike shop. I just sat down and noted down the gear systems of different bikes. And it was incredibly draining and incredibly taxing and incredibly difficult. My first job sucked. And uh, honestly, it took me about six months. And I, in this time, I listened to the soundtrack of La La Land on repeat. I just dreamt of becoming an artist. I just really wanted to be creative. I just really wanted to do something different. I just wanted to do something original. But here I was spending 40 hours a week noting down bike specifications on a tech sheet, just screaming off when I could have a day off, when I could come home, when I could work on my ideas. Needless to say, I was fired. I was fired within less than six months. I lost my job. <laughs> they didn't want me there. I didn't want to be there. It was good riddance for both of us. And um, in a way, um, that was when things went better. Uh, after that, I got a job in customer service, and yeah, you'd think, okay, customer service, that's terrible, oh my god, how can an INFJ work in customer service? But the first years were not that bad. I worked for a small company where five different employees, it was not the call center you'd imagine, it was easy, it was relaxing, it was a comfortable atmosphere. The work pace was slow paced, there were not a lot of calls, it was really a slow paced, easy job until it changed. So before that, I had the time of my life, really. I had a 32-hour job. I had lots of free time. I could work on my own projects. Sometimes I worked on my own projects at work. I, when things were low, slow, when there were not a lot of jobs to be done, I just spent time writing on my own projects, working on my own blog and doing my own thing, you know. I saw myself grow and I saw my numbers increase and I was doing really well and I was really excited and really happy and it was back in 2019 when my channel really peaked I hit I broke roof off the roof I was uh, during the autumn of uh, 2019 I was going through the time of my life my viewership hit the highest point it's ever been at I had uh, as if more than 1,000 subscribers a month coming into my channel. I had uh, an incredible growth, and my videos were doing incredibly well. Like I said, though, things were not meant to last. Uh, my customer service job was bought up by the owning company, and by another company, and uh, the work changed. Uh, it became their stress. Uh, that you'd imagine a customer service job becoming. It became the intensity, the phone calls, constant phone calls. It became the 
uh, push and pressure of constantly logging all your work and uh, documenting every hour you put in. It became the struggle of constantly being available and super ambitious and super helpful and constantly overwhelmed. Suddenly, my job went from having five uh, co-workers to having 80 in the same room cramped together. I came home exhausted every day. I was too tired to make videos. I didn't have the energy anymore. Everything was difficult and I was struggling. I was really, really struggling. And needless to say, so did my YouTube channel. I wasn't putting out videos anymore. My consistency wasn't there anymore. My videos, the ones that I did put out, were rushed. Uh, the words rang hollow. My energy wasn't in there. And that meant people weren't in there. The audience left. People stopped watching. I, my subscribing rate dropped. Everything really fell, fell away, fell apart. Slowly and steadily, my channel started to bomb. I lost more than 100,000 viewers every month. I lost two thirds of my viewership. And uh, this has been a slow downward trend and it really hit its worst numbers uh, this year and May. So from that point on, yeah, it's just been a slow downward spiral and I didn't know how to get out of it. I was stuck in my job, I was putting in more and more effort, I was more and more exhausted, more and more stressed, more and more burnt out working in customer service and I didn't have the time or energy, COVID was happening, I didn't have the atmosphere to create content, I couldn't film in my own apartment, I didn't feel good about anything I did, I felt like I had lost. And back in May I published a video where I explained that my channel is dead, I've lost my energy I don't have the uh, capacity anymore to keep doing this and uh, this is why my channel died and this is why things just broke down at this point I told myself a lot of reassuring things you know like uh, you had a good run like you did good you have had a lot of impact you've helped a lot of people you know I tried to encourage myself and I tried to be positive to everyone else around me saying yeah life has to move on you have to find new things maybe there is something else waiting out there for me maybe there is another project or another goal I can work on another story that's waiting for me to happen however the words were hollow and empty like while everyone else thought I was being super positive I didn't feel that way. I didn't feel good. I didn't feel happy. I didn't feel like I was done. I didn't feel like I'd hit the level I wanted to. I didn't feel like I'd achieved the things that I wanted to. You know, my goal since I was a kid has been and has remained the same. I want to share ideas that change the lives of other people. I want people to see new perspectives, to gain insight. I want to help people understand themselves and the world around them so that they can make better choices, so that they can live happier, more fulfilling lives. That was my goal when I was 12, and that is my goal today. And uh, I have never really been able to give up on that. I've never really been able to lose sight of that. No matter what I've done, that's been my goal with what I've been doing. So I felt anxiety, I felt stress, I felt pain, I cried, I... Uh, yeah, I struggled and uh, it only became worse because my relationship ended and uh, things were really starting to spiral out of control. At this point, I was starting to worry that I was, I was going to lose everything. I was going to lose my job. I was going to lose everything. You know, at this point, uh, I had nothing. I was at risk of having nothing. And luckily, at this point, I had made an investment. I made an investment into becoming a front-end developer, into developing my own websites, into uh, mastering WordPress and design. I didn't enjoy coding, no, it's not my thing, but I enjoy design and I enjoy creating things and I enjoy creating content creation platforms. I enjoy helping artists and people that want to uh, create and to share their ideas with the world. So I have uh, been putting a lot of effort into getting people uh, into becoming a creator and a content creator and becoming a person that can help content creators. And uh, that was the change for me because I was able to get a new job as a web developer. And I was able to get my own apartment. 
I was able to rebuild things. I was able to uh, be reborn from my own ashes. And from there on, I felt so much more relief, so much more security, so much more comfort. So I feel so much better today than I did a few months ago. I feel so much more secure, so much more confident. And uh, that's why I'm here today. That's why I'm able to make these videos. That's why I'm out there. That's why I'm working so hard again. Uh, because I've got my energy back. I've got my motivation back. And I've got my cause back. And one thing that really changed things for me, one thing that really put things in perspective for me was when I had a conversation with a friend. And she was like looking over my channel and she was looking over my numbers. She was, she was like, you realize that these are not numbers, right? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, you realize that these uh, 3,000 people that tune in every day, they're not 3,000 numbers. They're 3,000 people. They're human beings. Like the people that are watching these videos right now, Eric, they are human beings. And I was like, what do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> because for me, you were all statistics. Like, you were all numbers. You were all people I had never seen. I've never seen your faces. I've never looked at you. I've never understood who you are. I've never seen you. So I don't know who you are. And I don't realize that you are human beings, that you are people with real lives, real struggles, real suffering. And honestly, it, uh, I was listening to a line in a song recently, and it really hit me. It was like, um, I must, uh, as an artist, uh, my, I must suffer, my integrity must suffer, and that suffering, that suffering that I feel for my art, for my craft, is just a reflection of the suffering of uh, human beings all over the planet. No matter what you're doing, you guys are going through sometimes difficult life situations. You guys are as confused and lost as I am. Probably if you're a millennial, uh, you're struggling with the same questions that I am struggling with. A lot of people out there are in need of the help and are in need of support and are in need of direction and are in need of uh, uh, passion and a lot of people out there are struggling to make it to make their own path in life to become their own people we're not the same generation that came before us we're not passionate about uh, making it in the liberal sense of the word of becoming successful of uh, becoming rich or of material wealth or proving our skills we are interested in one thing, and that is self-realization. And that is why 16 personalities videos are blowing up today. So if you're making a 16 personalities YouTube channel, if you're out there making videos or writing articles about the personality types, realize this. You are assisting a generation that cares about and is passionate about one thing, and that is self-realization. The art of becoming your best version of yourself. We are all working to help people across the world find out who they are and to help them create their best life, a life where they can be themselves, 100% themselves, a life where people can truly grow and not just grow to become rich or successful in the material sense, not just to get a good paying job or to get material wealth or security, but also to uh, create their own passion and to fulfill their own purpose. We will no longer bear with just sitting in a job that makes us feel content or that just makes us feel secure. We want to find things to do, hobbies, interests, passions, purpose that really burns with us, that really uh, resonates with us. So I think you're watching my videos because you are one of those people, one of those people that are struggling in the rat race and the pursuit of success and the career orientedness and the competition. And somebody that is struggling to make it, struggling to uh, be happy and to feel fulfillment in what you do. You're probably somebody that wants to feel happy doing what you do, but gets caught up in the numbers, gets caught up in the uh, rat race, gets caught up in uh, work-related concerns and the system around you. So what I want to do is I want to help you break free from that, help you break free from the role that you live up to at your job, the persona that you have created for yourself in social settings. I want you to uh, find the freedom, the individuality to be yourself and to be your best version of yourself. That's why I make YouTube videos and I'm going to keep making YouTube videos even if I stop gaining subscribers, even if nobody ever watches anymore, you know, even if things just remain the way they are, you know, I'm going to keep making videos because 
35,000 people are still 35,000 subscribers, you know. You guys are still here and there are still people out there that resonate, that care for what I do and that uh, learn from and gain value from my work. So I'm going to keep doing it for you guys. I'm going to keep doing it for myself and for my own <laughs> uh, peace of mind. And uh, yeah, I just hope that I can help. And I hope that the uh, 16 personalities videos will keep blowing up and that uh, we're going to take over the world.